The real essence of Cusco is not the ancient Inca ruins like Machu Picchu, Pisac, Saksai Woman, Huacara Bucara. The real essence of Cusco are the pollerias, the chicken restaurants. Peruvians love their chicken. And pizzerias, they had several pizzerias nearby so you could find pizza all day, any day. And Volkswagen Beetles. Seriously, we played Slug Bug every single day. We were getting into the 20s and into the 30s of the number of Volkswagen Beetles we saw. Um, it's also called Pichirilo in Espanol. So I, Pichirilo in my cubro. I look got it forever. Yeah, look bruise. at Winnie's bruise. Look at that bruise. It's a birthmark. <laughs> Slug bug. Pichi dilo. Me cubro. Me cubro. Pichi dilo. Me cubro más. Más y más. Pichi dilo. Me cubro. Me visto noche. Slug bug. Oh, all the way over there. You got me. You got me again. <laughs> Winnie just saw one. And I, I, I there's one over here. A Pichidilo. And there's another right, right there. You can barely see it. Winnie got one and I got one. I got Winnie three times. Pichidilo. Pichi Dino. You wanna roja Pichi Dino? Pichi Dino, me cubro. And you got me again. We have caught a little bit of a travel bug. And on top of that, we are not entirely sure where we want to end up in the long run. So, in the back of our minds, there's always one big question Will we consider living here? So, to document our experience, and consider our thoughts whether we would live in Cusco or not, we're making these city reviews. We are also super grateful because you guys are very engaged with these city reviews. <laughs> so keep it coming, keep telling us what you like to see in these ones and what do you think we are missing. Overall feel and uniqueness, I felt that Cusco was divided. There was the city center which was very charming with colonial architecture and these really old roads that have been there for like hundreds of years and lots of tourists lots and lots of tourists and lots of tourist agencies and it was just a totally different world and we stayed in the airbnb outside just we had to walk quite a few blocks to get where we were in a more, more local environment and it was like completely latin america like you had to put your trash outside on the corner of the street type of thing you know they didn't have this thorough trash picking up system and everything just felt disorganized and crowded and so it was like these here's what the colonials built you know hundreds of years ago here's what the Incas built thousands of years ago and here's what we built today and it's just kind of this non it just it, it was just kind of odd to me <laughs> <laughs> like the in, in reality lots of tourists in the city center and then just kind of like Latin America if you stepped outside of the city center like instantly yeah, overall feel and uniqueness for me, it really feels like you are in two different worlds. In the city center, which is where all of the hotels are located, you are in such an international place. Mm -hmm. You see people from everywhere in the world. You walk outside of it, it's completely different. It is just Peruvians and the funny infrastructure but also the pollerias in the cheaper prices. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, way cheaper, unbelievably cheaper if you just go to the local restaurants instead. I, I couldn't believe it. We got a whole chicken sandwich meal, not sandwich, sorry, not sandwich, chicken meal, like big, huge chicken breasts for, for like two of them for like $7. It was kind of ridiculous. We stayed in Cusco for a month from like mid-May to mid-June and we stay outside of the city center so um, it was really close to the Mercado Rosa Spata, steps away from Iglesia de la Recoleta, and mm -hmm. it was a very local neighborhood. There were a couple more hotels nearby, but very few. 
with mostly locals really close to the mercado and local restaurants. Yeah, during that time of the year, they were starting the Sun Festival, and we saw at the Iglesia, at the church, uh, several several activities going on. They were all local. We didn't see any tourists out, so this was it was super lo local. They were also uh, throughout the week doing their routines, practicing for the bigger celebration um, of of the Inti Inti celebration, the Sun Inti, Festival. Yeah, the Sun, the Inti Raimi. It was also like very good to experience that time of the year because May felt kind of empty. Like Cusco was not very busy, but towards the beginning of June, mm -hmm. the people just it started exploded. To get, it started to get crowded. It was a little insane to go to the city center during that time. Yeah. Weather and geography. Okay, the location of Cusco is about 3,400 meters in altitude and elevation and so it's in the mountains it's also in the tropics so the weather tends to be pretty consistent but we we're also going into the more drier season where the where the temperatures get a little cooler throughout the year and we were waking up and we were inside an apartment that had no like real insulation so it was cold <laughs> like, <laughs> and i looked at my phone and i'm like oh my gosh like in celsius it was zero degrees or in fahrenheit 32 degrees and then by midday it would hit like 80 when we were like taking off our our jackets and shirts or and everything um but it, yeah it would hit 80 degrees fahrenheit which is what 25 ish 25 degrees 26 celsius. degrees so i mean think about it celsius zero to 25 degrees throughout the day and then 32 to 80 in fahrenheit i mean the weather was just so drastic uh, we'd wake up and be like freezing cold and the water was just freezing cold um, but the good thing was like the sun was so intense that we did three batches of clothes like we washed our clothes <laughs> and we we've set them out to dry and they were dry within an hour in the yes, midday sun so it, quickly. Was, it was that that was good about it but it was just like so i don't know it was just the 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 change was so much it was too drastic also typically the tours they pick you up around three, four in the morning when it's really cold. So you really need to cover yourself mm -hmm. and you are out there all day long. So by midday, you're in a bin full of people, which oftentimes they don't have air conditioner. So you're, you're taking off layers. You're taking off all your clothes because it's hot. Yeah, it these, gets so hot. I don't recall one van we got in having AC. <laughs> no. and that works well. Vans, it was the vans that didn't even have the windows that opened on the side. So it was just they, the, the front two windows of the vans were open. <laughs> and you, if, we were in the back of the bus a couple times and we were like just dying sweating. Um, so you can expect that if you go to Cusco and also do the tours. Yeah, so just get that alpaca fiber, t-shirt, yeah. sweater, whatever, because it helps you regulate the all temperature. All the more reason to buy all the alpaca stuff that they have. <laughs> Speaking of alpacas, let's talk about what we loved. And I love the alpacas. I love petting the alpacas. I loved eating the alpacas. They are so delicious. I loved buying everything alpaca socks, clothing items. I am currently obsessed with alpacas. Look, that's an American brand that I found that sells incredible clothes. And it's, an, it's my new obsession. I love alpacas. <laughs> they are as good as they as taste they as they are cute. They're as cute as they taste. Is that how you would say that? I don't know. They taste so delicious. Other things we loved, obviously the ancient ruins that are nearby we did not we did not i will say this again we did not go see machu picchu but we saw several other ancient ruins sex that woman piggy sack many many others uh i knew there was a lot there but it was way more than i actually could have imagined and we kind of like to do things sometimes where we don't completely research a place but there is so much to do other than the the famous rainbow mountain machu picchu which are two things we didn't do um but it, it was awesome and I would totally go again, um, just to experience all the other things I didn't have enough time to really experience because it was just too much. There was honestly too much. Um, some other things we loved were... The I, I mean, I love the geography, Cusco being so high in elevation. It's also so close to these spectacular mountains that are so different from what I've seen in Colombia, right? Like, our mountains are very green, very lush, mm -hmm. very... Um, 
like that jungle ecosystem kind of but the ones we saw in Peru were so dry full of minerals like rainbow mountain then we had this Nevado um, Ausangate which is a Nevado mm -hmm. right and it was just so different and I thrive on mountains I loved just looking at mountains <laughs> so being there I was just incredibly happy and the other thing we loved is the food like the food period is good in Peru. Peruvian cuisine is excellent. I think because Peruvians are also used to experimenting with different flavors, they also do other international cuisines very well as well. So like just trying Asian restaurants and whatever. The food was good everywhere we went. Lots of flavor. Loved it for the food. Even the pizzerias. <laughs> and pojerias. <laughs> Activities. The thing to do in Cusco is kind of the get out of Cusco. <laughs> uh, th there are some ancient ruins inside Cusco itself, um, and there's many, many other ancient Inca ruins uh, about an hour, four hours away, uh, many mountains, several different adventurous things to do, and of course, Machu Picchu, which is more like six hours away from Cusco, uh, minimum. And we chose not to do Machu Picchu for several reasons, such as the amount of people going, the time commitment, how much time you actually get at the top of the mountain. We chose to spend our money elsewhere. Yes, we actually decided to go to an alpaca farm experience where we like rode horses. We got to hang out with the alpacas, pet them, touch them. We saw them do naughty things. <laughs> <laughs> before they were released into the mountains to go graze for the day and also the family they received us they fed us a lot of food and we got to go to one of the lakes of Osangate and have this very peaceful experience with the people that live around it that was definitely the highlight of that that month for us and visiting Cusco we saw some other places like Huacara Pucara, which was kind of, it's actually pre-Inca, uh, supposedly. They were excavating and finding more and more information. And the archaeologist there, I can't say that right now, um, that it was actually a place where they could serve, survey the land and wait for intruders to come in. Um, so that was interesting. We also saw Pisac. We saw Pisac, all, a bunch of archaeological places. We decided not to visit Rainbow Mountain because it's also another very crowded place. And so the agencies, they all recommend to go to Palcoyo if you don't want to have that overwhelm experience. And we did that. It was pretty amazing. A lot more calm. We saw maybe 20 people. I think it was there. more like 40 people, but it was 40? very, yeah. very few. Okay. It was very few tourist um, versus what I've heard about the Rainbow Mountain where there's like a line of people. So we, we did decide to do the the less popular uh, activities. activities and we were having a blast. It was still amazing. I mean, the alpaca farm, it was us and another couple, four people. That, that was great. We're going to make a separate video uh, on our adventures in Cusco and all the different things we experienced just because it's so much the show and so much we want to reflect back on as well. Cost of living and budget. We spent $2,500 in an entire month inside Cusco, and that's including accommodation, that's including activities, that's including groceries, eating out, so everything uh, to spend in, in, in Cusco. Uh, we felt that was very affordable. We're gonna actually do a full budget review on Cusco. We will be dropping that about a week from this video. Let's talk about safety. And Cusco feels incredibly safe. You can walk anywhere at any time of the day. Like you can literally walk at 4 a.m. in the morning for your tour to pick you up, wherever you need to be, and just be completely fine. We talked to a couple of tour guides, some locals, and they mentioned that because the majority of their economy is based in tourism, they really respect and they appreciate the tourist. So they will take care of you. You will be okay. You will be safe. Let's talk about our real passion, food. <laughs> and you can literally find all kinds of restaurants in Cusco from like fine dining to like 
the small podge it is that we highly recommend that you try because it's like the most local thing you can go do. It is. <laughs> they are everywhere and you get a big piece of well-cooked chicken with a bunch of french fries. So if you like french fries, you will get a full plate of it, salad, soup, some chicha. It's a good plate for like four dollars max. Four, yeah, four or five dollars max. Four or five dollars max. And we didn't see a lot of foreigners going into the Poyerias. And I really think that people should go and try it. Yeah, it's, absolutely. Yeah, it's what the locals go and have every day. We went on Mother's Day. And that's where they were celebrating yeah. Mother's Day. <laughs> the whole place was packed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so that was a unique experience, but you can also go and have some alpaca, which is just incredibly delicious. We went to this, this restaurant called Hama, where we had possibly the best alpaca burger ever. I think that's the only alpaca burger I've ever had. <laughs> but we went there five times and it was freaking delicious. <laughs> it was it delicious. a really good review for them as well. Yeah, other dishes were really well made there too. Yeah, it's kind of almost a hole in the wall type of restaurant, but it was good. Yes. It was really good. And we tried other fancier restaurants where we had, you know, different types of um, food, desserts, but you should definitely have a kui, a guinea yes. pig. That might sound weird. What was the name of the town that was north of Pisac? I don't remember. It was remember. north of Pisac, the one on the way to the next town. <laughs> <laughs> La Mai. La Mai. Ah. It's La Mai. That's the name of the place. La Mai that, is the name of a small town that has a ton of kui restaurants. Yeah, they, all the locals are saying, go there, you can eat kui, you gotta go to La Mai. Which we did. We and did, yeah. It was pretty good. I think the only thing that annoyed me is like the rib cage is really tiny, so yeah, it kind of so like good. felt like I was eating fish because <laughs> of all the bones and the pick out. <laughs> but it's nothing weird. This is part of their gastronomy and what they eat. In their and, culture. Yeah. yeah, of the culture. So if you can support it, because then you will be supporting households that, you know, are providing their families with these type of restaurants, go ahead and do it. Let's get into the negatives and our criticism. So the first thing that we think is that Cusco, and again, considering would we live here, would we live in this place, we find it too touristy. There's too many tourists everywhere all the time uh, especially in the city center uh, and that's just kind of overwhelming and takes away the charm of the place to be honest the magic of Cusco yeah. also the infrastructure outside of the city center it gets a little crummy like you see a lot of what you see across Latin America crummy roads unfinished houses it is just not as comfortable and appealing yeah, and it, like the trash system is to put trash on the corner of the street. So at certain times of the day, so you see a big pile of trash for them. There's stray dogs everywhere. The stray, stray dogs, dogs are getting in the trash. So there's trash all over the all, all over the ground. So like to to me, like it, it was kind of wearing to know like okay, Cusco very charming in the city center, but the rest of the city is certainly Latin America kind of disorganized. Uh, the, what they build is a little crummy. The mall surprisingly was nice on the inside, but you wouldn't have noticed, you wouldn't think that by looking at the outside of the mall. Um, so I, I found that very interesting. Um, the other negative is that the weather is a little drastic. It's a little drastic. It's too, it gets too cold for us. Yeah. We cannot handle the cold very well. And because of the infrastructure, the housing does not have insulation inside houses and apartments. It gets just way too cold. Yeah, I remember opening my computer at like 8 or 9 in the morning and my hands just felt so stiff and I could barely type. And it's how cold it was. And I'm like over here like typing like, oh, I can't wait for it to get warmer. <laughs> and then by about 11 or 12, it was like, okay, I can start to take off this jacket and it's starting to warm up. <laughs> But that's it. I mean, it's just those three things. Other than that, I think the Peruvian people are awesome. They're very humble. They're the coolest Latin Americans I know. In conclusion, would we live in Cusco? At this moment, that is a no. But it is a place that we loved. We love the people. We love the food. And it is potentially a place where we would go back and do the things that we couldn't do in the month that we spent there. Please let us know your thoughts. 
comment below. Did we miss something? I know we already missed a bunch of stuff. <laughs> There's just so much to do in the Cusco area. Uh, but comment below. Let us know your thoughts. Thank you for watching. Peace and love. Okay, we're grocery shopping and look at this. Look at this. It's a, it's a guinea pig. It's a guinea pig. A guinea pig. That right there is a guinea pig. That actually looks like a good amount of meat. Wow. All right, what do you got? Show me what you got. Culantro. <laughs> I got you, Vita. I got Pichirilo, you. Pichirilo, it doesn't come. Slug bug. Slug bug. Right.